What's going on, YouTube? How you guys doing? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. Gotta love, gotta love life. Springtime in the suburbs of Chicago. It's gonna be Instagram Live. I have a little allergy thing going on, so I apologize for the trend cough. Apologize for all that stuff. So I wanted to kind of get into a couple things, and this topic just boom popped into my mind. By the way, I will be in Australia starting Friday, Australia time. I'm flying out tomorrow, and I'll be touring with Mike Rashid and, <coughs> excuse me, with Mike Rashid, Sean Torbody, and Massive Joe. We'll be touring Australia. Um, all the details are on my Instagram, Joe's Instagram, Mike Rashid's Instagram, as well as Sean's Instagram. But without further ado, let's uh, let's kick ass. What we're going to do is we're going to rock and roll. We're going to get some uh, thought. We're going to introduce Swoley to you. We're going to go over my topic, which is why fad dieters are always fucking dieting. Then we're going to answer q &As. So without further ado, here we go. Now, Swoley launched this week. It's a post-workout amplifier. What it does, it improves nitrogen retention, improve, increases amino acid absorption, increases BCAA, glutamine, and arginine blood levels, doubles the power of your protein, which is protein synthesis, enhances protein absorption, and reduces protein excretion. It's only, <coughs> excuse me, it's only $19.99. Um, pretty much that's the price that we're going to find it. Subs.com, TigerFitness.com, even at a lot of retail stores. So this is good to go. What you do is you put it with whatever you're taking. If you have post-workout protein and carbs, take it with that. If you have a whole food meal, take it with that. It's unflavored, but it tastes like powdered sugar. It's absolutely delicious. That's all I'm going to say about it. For more information, click on the link in the description box below, and you'll have more. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, so on to the diet thing. Do you guys notice that all these keto guys are always dieting? They're always trying to get lean. They never stay lean. And that's the thing is that they haven't figured out how to use that diet to stay lean. It's a fad. It's something you lose to lose fat. However, one cannot sustain on that diet for a long period of time. You look at people like Doug Miller. Doug Miller eats like a bro. Protein, carbs, and fat. You look at someone like Mike Rashid. Mike Rashid is a vegan, but vegan is his lifestyle. Mike Rashid stays lean year-round. Both these guys train year-round, so their exercise levels are always high. However, you look at one who's an extreme vegan. <laughs> you look at one like Doug Miller or myself, who are bros, who eat pretty much clean food choices and have protein, carbs, and fat, but there's balance. So something you could do every day. For example, I don't have to eat eggs and bacon. I can eat eggs and bacon, but I can also have toast, or I can have a piece of bread, or I can have a sandwich, or I can have a salad, or I can have a piece of fruit. The problem with keto diets and the problem with extreme elimination diets is that you're inherently setting yourself up for failure. Why? Because let's say we're going to Australia, okay? And Joe gets food prepared for us. And it might not all be keto friendly. Maybe I don't have a fat and stay in ketosis. Maybe I just want to eat some carbs. Bottom line is, I don't see many people lasting on this war on carbs or this keto lifestyle long-term. Sure, it works. You're essentially cutting your calories. What ketosis does, what a ketogenic diet does, it eliminates 33% of your dietary friggin' Well, MB free, I'm just giving you an example of who we see in the fitness industry. There are a lot of people who eat McDonald's year round and stay lean. <clears throat> However, most people I see, most people that I see who try and do a keto diet, a carnivore diet, any diet that eliminates or bastardizes or um, inherently uh, makes any food evil, that person will inevitably fall off that diet. And when they fall off, it's not like someone like me. If, if me or Doug fall off the diet, we have a little bit of ice cream. If Mike Rashid eats a piece of steak and breaks his veganism, just goes back on. If you're keto and you say, fuck keto, you're going to eat all the carbs. 
like every single fucking carb you can find. Not only is it going to lead to immediate weight gain because carbohydrate brings fluid with it, which will bring more water weight. But I mean, that'll get you distressed and it'll get you uh, depressed and you'll end up eating even more because you're depressed. So at the end of the day, I think these diets, because they're exclusionary, if you're eating keto, you can't eat processed crap. For example, flexible dieters love Pop-Tarts. However, I see a lot of flexible dieters like Cone Wolf, like Alberto Nudez, and while they do have an off season, while they do have an off season, you don't see them getting fat as fuck. Whereas I will see most keto people, it seems like every day they're like, oh, I'm starting my diet. I'm starting my diet. I'm starting my diet. Whereas guys who live a more flexible diet, <clears throat> you see that they tend to just adjust things up or down to get what they need to get. But they're not inherently just throwing out all the pasta or potatoes. Thank you, I killed Glenn. Glenn. <coughs> what they're doing is they're just adjusting calories up and down. So it's not a drastic transition. Instead of having eight ounces of sweet potato with meal two, they have four. Instead of having 15 grams of fat with meal three, they're having 10. It's an adjustment. Whereas keto will be having a mixed diet where you're enjoying things like toast, pasta, rice, maybe a Pop-Tart here or there. And then you're like, fuck it. I'm gonna go diet, but I'm gonna use keto because all my favorite Insta hoes and fitness celebrities are saying it's the way to go. I'm not saying keto is bad. Keto is extremely efficient for fat loss. For certain people like epileptics, it's amazing for your health. Has a lot of it, um, uh, great use in diabetics. However, as a long-term eating strategy, I see you being better off in learning how to eat healthy, whole, natural foods and learning how to control your calories. And I'm not suggesting you take a food scale out wherever you go. I don't use a food scale anymore. Why? Well, because I've been doing this for a lot of years. So what I'm able to do is eyeball things and know how much I need to eat to maintain a certain level. I know how much to eat to gain. That's everybody's goal to get there, but it might take you five to 10 years to get to that point. So what I suggest you do is find a diet you like. If you like toast, if you look forward to your fucking Ezekiel English muffin every morning and eggs, keto's not for you. If you love bacon and you hate potatoes, Maybe keto's for you. But at the end of the day, it's not special. All keto does is shifts you to burning fat for fuel. Why? Well, because your body lacks carbohydrate, which is glucose. Your body lacks protein, which your body turns into glucose via gluconeogenesis. So your body is forced to turn fat into energy by converting them to ketones, which is phenomenal for your brain. However, I don't see it being the best way for most. Now for some pre-diabetic epileptics and people who just don't like fucking carbs and really like bacon, I see keto being awesome. But for most of the people I work with, most people I talk to, having a balanced diet, adequate protein, adequate fat, filling in the rest of carbohydrate for energy. I like the effects carbohydrate have pre-workout and post-workout. I believe they do aid in recovery and optimal performance. So again, keto isn't bad, but to think that it is the fucking magic bullet for fat loss, I encourage you to look at the people who actually look a certain way. You could point to drugs, you could point to this and point to that. At the end of the day, the keto people are on drugs too, <clears throat> okay? All the natural athletes I know who maintain a good look, year round, they tend to have a mixed flexible diet where they have a carbohydrate, protein, and fats in their diet. That's all I gotta say about that. Open it up to questions. We have 20 minutes. Let's fucking rock and roll. Questions, questions, questions. Hello from Greece. What's up, cool Greek? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, Fitness 253. Fad diets are just a way for a company to charge you for a ream diet of the past, paleo, keto, etc., etc. It's always a case of instant gratifications of what, and when that doesn't work, a new fad begins. 
I think we're seeing a lot of them. I think we had keto came in the 70s. Then it resurged again in the late 90s. And you're seeing a resurgence now. You're also seeing subsects of keto come in, like the carnivore diet, um, like other diets of that nature. At the end of the day, I do not believe exclusionary diets. In fact, Chris Bell, the Professor Stronger, actually had a great post. He considers a carnivore diet. It was on Instagram yesterday. If you're not following Chris, Chris Bell, do it. But um, his was like, and I posted, this post is awesome. Basically, his thought is that paleo to him is 90% meat, 10% fruit, veggies, coffee, whatever. So again, he's allowing those things. So I'm all for a high fat, high protein diet. However, I don't believe you should ever exclude anything. And I do not believe being in ketosis offers any benefit. And also a lot of the research coming out shows that external ketones, as found in Ambrosia Ritual, gives you the benefits of having being in ketosis without having to deprive yourself of carbohydrate. Funny, I'm keto and I stay lean year round, no cravings either. Again, I'm going from empirical majority of what I see, and there are always exceptions to every rule. That's why LeBron James is the GOAT. Should you weigh your food cooked or uncooked? I cannot imagine portioning out six ounce chicken breasts before I cook them. That is why I measure them cooked. And all of the apps, including uh, Fit, including Daily Burn, Fit Day, and all that have cooked macros. At the end of the day, if you're consistent with it, it shouldn't matter. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Nothing beats an omelet and Ezekiel toast in the morning. I'm an eggs uh, over easy kind of guy, but I love it. Does glycemic index have any negative effect when trying to cut body fat? Joseph, I do not believe so. It might have a minor, 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 minor effect, but if your macros are on point, I do not believe that glycemic index will do much other than performance and overall health. Keto just means that there are more carbs for me to eat. Amen. Hallelujah, Randy. Sending love from Chicago, my hometown, man. I'm sitting in Elgin, Illinois right now. Macro County will always be king. I believe I, I agree with you. In your opinion, what is the minimum effective dose when it comes to BCA during training? I believe five grams should be the minimum you should take. Um, if you look at machine fuel, like this bottle here, you know, I have... A good, uh, if you do two scoops, over 10 grams. So uh, two scoops of machine fuel is what I recommend. You have a, <coughs> excuse me, you have a, <coughs> it's killing me. You have a great article on the keto diet. I mean, second one, I have a ton of articles on keto. Your new product, Swoley. This bad boy right here, it's ready to rock. Linked in the description box. From Joseph Stone. Does Tabata or circuit training for cardio burn as many calories as an incline walk on treadmill for 30 minutes? Absolutely. Um, you can burn more calories in less time by going harder. Now, you haven't said what your Tabata or circuit training is, but generally speaking, walking for 30 minutes doesn't burn much of anything. Um, low intensity steady state is great for recovery. It's good for overall health. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really burn that fucking much. It just doesn't. Been on TRT for a year now. My balls hurt. Should I stop? Bernie, I suggest you see the doctor who prescribed it at TRT and tell him your balls hurt. Honestly, you're the best entrepreneur I know right now. Uh, there's others like Elon Musk and, uh, you know, all those guys. Uh, they're much better than me. Mark Cuban. Which, wh which up companies don't use hair feathers for BCA? <clears throat> I use only vegan instaminos, as you can see right here. So mine is derived from fermentation. So I don't, and I give two fucks about other companies. Should I use a testosterone booster? I'm 23. I see no reason not to use insurgent and barracuda. It will help you in the production of your own testosterone, and it can't hurt. It's all natural. It's awesome. Are you going to post your boxing match on your channel? Yes, absolutely. Win or lose, I'll post it. I believe I'll be ready for it, and I'm going for a win, obviously, but uh, yes, I will post my June 30th boxing match at the Beer Boxing Festival in Cincinnati, Ohio. <clears throat> Guy at my gym complained about my shirt's profanity, knowledge without mileage is bullshit. 
No employee has said anything. Should I be respectful or a dick? It's a comfortable shirt to train in. Um, you can always replace it with an MTS shirt. Tips for preventing knees from going over toes while squatting, or is it not a big deal? If that's your body's natural range of motion, I don't see a problem. However, <coughs> excuse me. However, it probably isn't. I believe that you should work on dropping your hips, whereas you push your butt back, you drop your hips into the squats, weight on the heel. There's no reason why your knees should be over your toes. A proper squat form will not have that. So I suggest, Jared, that you work on your squat form. Should I do cardio while cutting if my diet is on point? Trevor, if you hit a stick point and you don't want to lower calories anymore, I do suggest you do cardio. I suggest at the least, at the least, that you do cardio Tabata two to three times a week for overall health. Negative, Jordan is the GOAT. LeBron's still going. So uh, we'll see where that pans out. I believe for time being, if LeBron retired tomorrow, Jordan would be the GOAT. <clears throat> I added you on LinkedIn, accept that shit. I batch accept like every three months. So sooner or later, I'll accept it. I just don't go in and accept everyone. I got like 500 pending. Silver Wolverine. I agree, Mark. Pick a diet you can stick with. I've lost about 40 pounds using my fitness pal and eating about eight slices of angelic toast a day. I don't eliminate any food groups, calories in, calories out. Absolutely silver. I agree. As long as you get results, the diet that works for you is the diet that you enjoy the most. My test is a hair under 500. Do you recommend TRT? I give, if I had test anywhere above 300, I would never touch TRT. Now nah, you don't fucking need TRT. At that point, you're just being greedy. Fitness 253, okay, there you go. Yeah, that's actually focused on getting glutes back, put a boxer bench. Yes, exactly what I said, um, Josh. You know, at the end of the day, he should not be having his knees go in that path. <clears throat> what do you think about, ah, oh, shit, from Akuma. What do you think about traditional strength training like the Highland Games? They look, they look fat, but they throw trees around like beasts. Well, you train for specificity. Half the guys who beat the shit out of me in boxing sparring at my gym, um, they beat the living fuck out of me. Like I had my fucking, I had blood all over the place yesterday. My nose is still swollen. I still have, I have a little bit of bruising on my body. You know, at the end of the day, you train for specificity and training for aesthetics and training for specificity are two different things. By being too lean, being lean and muscular does not mean that you are functional and good at sports. Trust me, I found out by getting punched in the face repeatedly. Who are two fitness gurus to look up to? Obviously, Mark Lobliner and Steve Shaw. <clears throat> so your match won't be live? Putting a match live, it will be live if you go to the Beer Boxing Festival in Cincinnati. It will be live. But to stream a boxing match, Mike Rashid did it right. People still bitch about the quality. I'll just get it up the next day and if someone wants to whip out their phone and put it on their Facebook Live, more power to them. Your thoughts on ashwagandha? I use KSM 66 in my sleep aid product. I like KSM 66. Who is the biggest up and coming star in bodybuilding for you? <clears throat> huh, I have no fucking idea. I've been following bodybuilding. Um, I have no, I, I really couldn't tell you. I wish I could. I believe that by the end of LeBron's career, we'll still be saying that. Time will tell. I bought Yohimbine and there is no label. Is it real or fake? Um, MTS Nutrition Yohimbine has a label. I don't know where the fuck you buy products without labels, but uh, how are you going to know what's in that? Like, don't take it. <clears throat> can I have rye bread? You can have fucking vag vaginal yeast bread. I don't care. <clears throat> At the end of the day, rye bread is actually fucking awesome. I always get rye bread when I can. From Janan, 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 Janan. Hey, Mark. <coughs> Fuck these allergies. Can't wait to leave this country. Fuck you, America. As I wear my real waist, real hero shirts. By the way, July 21st, I'll be there. Hi, Mark. I'm 157 pounds at 16.9% body fat and 5'7". 
I'm cutting because it's Ramadan and I'm fasting, so it's easier to cut. How lean should I get before I consider bulking? Uh, you're still fat. Even though you're small, you're still fat. Get down to 8% and then do a lean bulk. For a good bulking program, go to massdiet.com. That's www.massdiet.com. From V. Elliott, did you watch the Toronto Pro Show? I would rather take this phone stand and shove each of these little legs up my ass than watch a professional bodybuilding show. Who's Steve Shaw? Well, according to some YouTubers, he's my sidekick. Steve, you like that? Steve is the best fucking editorial director and one of the greatest men to ever walk this earth next to Moses, Jesus, and of course, Roddy Roddy Piper. LeBron's still got seven years. Thank you, Moby Brick. You Jordan guys, you just need to sit back and let LeBron take over. What's your opinion on D-Bowl only cycles? I think it's a stupid idea. I think when you come off, you're going to lose all your gains. And um, it's extremely hepatoxic. Steve is that skinny, cute guy. Yes. Oh, absolutely. You know what, Steve? In a room full of fat guys, he is the skinniest, cutest guy there is. From Jared, morning workouts before or after your morning supplement routine. I always take my supplements first thing, man. Because I eat. My swole is being delivered today. I'm going to deliver it right to you guys. Ready? Boom! Motherfucker. Jordan, although since I'm from Detroit, I'm not a fan of his, changed the game. He absolutely did lifting Lutheran. By the way, I apologize for all the cursing. But I will have you know that I did go to California Lutheran University and we had touchdown Marty and Martin Luther. <clears throat> hey, from Ireland. Hey, from America. Ordered yesterday, ready delivered. Tiger Fitness is the GOAT. Yes, we are. I brought for my trainer how to know it's fake. It's all white. Can I take it? Fire your trainer. And throw away that Yohimbai. If it is Yohimbai, your trainer's an idiot. My exact plan is to get to 8 to 9% body fat and use MassDiet.com. Awesome. That's a good diet. It's simple. 6'2", 185. <clears throat> Abs are not too visible. Cut or bulk, then shred. <coughs> um, D, I don't know what your body fat is, but if you're above 8%, I'd like to see you start your bulk at around 8% body fat and then aim to gain one to two pounds a month. Red and green supplement coming out yet? Well, we have machine greens and multi. However, under Pervitam, we are working on an epic, epic formula. <clears throat> yes, but Steve Shaw and Roddy Roddy Piper didn't die for our sins. Lifting Luther and I will have you know that Roddy Roddy Piper starred in the greatest horrible movie of all time called They Live. And not only did he slay tons of aliens disguised as human beings, but he also coined the greatest line in movie history. I've come here to kick ass and to chew bubblegum. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Hello, Treasure Smith. From Sal, as I've aged late 30s, I dribble more than erupt. Is that normal? Oh, he's talking about coming. Um, <laughs> Man, I don't know. Uh, I just can judge my own cum shots. Um, my, mine are pretty good. Um, I could call my wife in here to verify that. But, you know, I go for distance. You know, I'm not a, if it dribbles, that's fine as long as it's like going at least 10 feet. My goal in hotel rooms is to hit the curtain from the bed. Do you use Nutrient Driver when you want to drive some nutrients? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I buy it for 1,500 Indian RS and had 60 tablets. Again, Vignesh, fire your trainer and don't take it. <coughs> Ryan Dooley. <coughs> what do you think about eating within a 12-hour window for muscle gain? Listening to an older Rogan podcast, he had a doctor on discussing this being beneficial for muscle growth. And I don't think it matters. Whether you're in a 12-hour or 24-hour period, if calories and macros are equal, your results will be similar. Uh, doctors are like assholes. No, nope, that's opinions. Um, assholes are like doctors. 
No. Eating assholes? No. Basically, I don't agree with that doctor. But eating assholes is completely acceptable. How important are genetics for bodybuilding? Ask Nadia52. Bodybuilding is the most genetically inherent based sport there is. Extremely fucking important. You can get some guys on all the drugs in the world, but as my buddy Ron Parmeter once said, you can't polish a turd into a diamond. LeBron is the goat of losing the finals. That's right, MJ is undefeated. He is undefeated. <clears throat> Last question, sorry, just to clarify. So it's something that's then work out, then eat. Here's what I do every morning. Take it for what it's worth, Jared, and I've done videos on this, but I would gladly, gladly share this information. And the way these questions are going, I will run this a bit longer. I don't have a conference call till 2 p.m. Eastern Standard. And I'm flying to Australia, so all I have to do is pack. So basically, here's what I do. I wake up, I feel like P. Diddy, okay? I go downstairs after I pee. Let my dog outside. <coughs> Excuse me. I feed my dog. We give him raw meat. As my dog is eating, I take my supplements. I mix in a scoop of machine greens, a scoop of nectar, and two scoops of machine fuel in a 32-ounce shaker. Not this one, but the Cyclone one. I then take all my pills and I drink it. Okay? I drink it all. I drink all the water and take all my pills. All the machine motion, um... Fucking, I have so many pills I can't remember. Machine Multi, uh, all that shit. Basically, everything MTS makes. I fucking put it in my mouth. I said, my motherfucking mouth. So I take all them pills, right? And then I let my dog in. I go upstairs. I take my morning shit. After I shit, I go downstairs and I have my pre-workout meal before I go to boxing. Before boxing, I usually have a quarter cup of cream of rice cooked, which is about 30 grams of carbs, and a scoop of MTS weigh-in. Sometimes I'll throw in a banana. Then I go box. So that's what I do. I always take my supplements first thing. Do you recommend eating ass pre or post-workout? It depends on the ass. Now, for example, if you're uh, dating a Mexican girl and she eats Mexican food, with the high rice and corn content, I recommend after. However, if you're dating an Italian with all the pasta they eat, I recommend having that before training because pasta is a slow digesting carbohydrate. Seth McFit, Jordan still has a higher PER than LeBron. So statistically, Jordan is a better player. LeBron is getting older, so his PER will go down. He's more titles. Seth, absolutely correct. As I sit in Chicago, I hereby ask the great God of Chicago, Mike Ditka, to grant me forgiveness for the sin I have committed. Hopefully the lifting Lutheran could put in a good word to Jesus for me too. Mark, step up your game and offer your products in Central Europe with reasonable shipping costs. We have it at A-List Nutrition. That's alistnutrition.com. But get us a distributor. Hook us up. Ask your local store for their distributor. And I'll gladly sell to them. I'll sell it. I'll ship it. I'll do everything. But sometimes I need your help. Killing it domestically. We're killing it in Australia. We're killing it everywhere and we will be killing it uk basically we're one usda paperwork away which is should be in this week from having unlimited supply in the uk <clears throat> i had to throw my vasky away it started clumping it was yellow and it makes the water that's all good that's just the hygroscopic nature of it it was still fine you shouldn't have thrown it away if you had a problem you could have just returned it we'll gladly replace it for you bro we have the best customer service ever how to get real your hand bro help me well we make it an mts nutrition Dude, yo, him buying isn't that good that you need to resort to black market shit. It's good, but it's not fucking dianable. Can I just put a scoop of full of swole in my mouth and drink down a premix shake? Not only will... This is swole, okay? Here's a scoop, okay? I already had a couple. Mmm. The answer is yes. Tastes like powdered sugar. It's actually kind of fucking tasty. Rap City. Everyone always comments on your loud nature and off the comments, did you take pre before this up? Comments pops up. What motivates you to be so awake and positive? Honestly, have you seen my life? 
My life is fucking awesome. I have the greatest wife in the world. My kids are fucking superstars. My company was number 116 on Inc. 500. I can do athletic shit. I can deadlift a lot of weight. I can box really poorly. I'm alive. You know, as I grow older, I notice that my, my high school's 20 year reunion is coming up. And like 20 people from my class have already died. The reason I'm motivated is because I'm alive. And I fucking love my life. I love every part of my life. I love my wife. I love my kids. I love the people I work with. I love Steve Shaw. I love my partner, Chad. I love Mike Rashid. I love Sean Torbati. I love Trey. I love Lacey. I love Tina. I love everybody in that fucking warehouse. I love Randall. I love Terrence. I love my life. I surround myself with these amazing people. And I have amazing support. Like even my boxing squad, like I'm getting ready for this charity match on June 30th. Like my sparring partners, Trey, Jerry, Eric. Um, we got Ed. We had another one this week too, Asaf. I mean, we have just my support group. Julian and Eric who coach me, Danny at the punch house. Like, dude, I have the greatest life in the world. Like, you know, I'm literally the luckiest man alive. Thoughts on leaning out without dropping performance in sports, specifically tennis? Uh, just lean out slowly and make sure you put carbohydrate around training. If you do eat carbohydrate, make sure you have it around training. <coughs> Jevin, LeBron been to the finals eight straight years, carried bums few of the years. Stats-wise, he's better than Jordan. Oh, we're going hard. How important are genetics for bodybuilding competitions? Really fucking important, Nadia. Bleach, what do you think about 16-year-olds taking pro-hormones at SARMs? Because I feel like it's a growing problem because they are pills, not injections. I believe this is one area I agree with Jason Blaha. Jason Blaha did a video before we hated each other. We actually were friends. He was an affiliate um, selling MTS Way. And I remember watching a video where he said that it can hurt their fertility and it's really a bad move. And I think that it's very silly for anybody under the age of 25 to even consider performance enhancing drugs. We'll provide them come out with a pre-workout later in the future. Stay tuned. Me, Kara, and Jason. Jason is now full-time, our video graphics guy. Doing some epic shit. From Richie, how's the sparring? All I know is that yesterday, Eric said that my combos were on point. Uh, but I am boxing guys. Like one of the guys, Asaf, was, uh, he's actually, you know, coached boxing. So Jerry, Asaf, and Trey, they're way better than me. But I actually boxed against a beginner, and he's a great guy. He's really good. He's 1-0. His name's Eric. And I thought that was more of a sign of what would happen if I was in the ring. And I'm not one to talk trash, nor do I have a right to talk trash, but I believe I did much better versus him than I did versus the experienced fighters that I'm always going up against. Do you think I should do insanity or use my bow flex? I think you should get your ass to a gym. What did he say about your himbot? I just ordered some. I said, order MTS. What's the most underrated supplement? Hmm. Uh, I think people underrate creatine. I think creatine is so common now that people don't realize it's the most studied and efficacious supplement there is. 54160 muscular body. I've been dieting for six months. The cat loose stomach fat. Any reasons? Just need to diet harder. <coughs> if, you're, if you're not losing fat, you need to either decrease calories or increase cardio or both. Go to dropfactorbook.com. That's dropfactorbook.com. That's my diet. Can Tyrant turn your pee dark? Absolutely it can. Um, a couple of the ingredients in there have that effect. Does heart rate matter when doing cardio to target body fat? I do not believe heart rate is, it matters at all unless you do a high intensity interval training where you want to hit, I believe, 80% of VO2 max. When I bulk, I bloat and look pregnant. But when I cut, I just look skinny as fuck. My size only looks decent, about 12 to 15% body fat. Slim, that's because you are you don't have as much muscle as you think you have. And you're actually just a fat guy who distributes fat well. The key is you got to gain more muscle. Um, or it could be mental. You could really look great to everybody else, but in your mind, you look like shit. It's called bigorexia. I have that. Actually, I think I look great. 
I actually look at myself in the mirror and masturbate ferociously. From Beastie Kid, just getting over bulging disc and a piriformis tear. I'm a lightweight box squatting. Is light squatting better than no squatting at all? Yes, absolutely. In fact, get the fuck out of box squatting and switch to goblet squats. Should machine greens be taken first thing AM or any time? Take it any time you want. Uh, okay, Vic. If you disagree with me on intermittent fasting, I'm good with that. Dr. Roger, <coughs> Rhonda Patrick knows more than me, probably. Um, however, uh, we disagree. Just because she's a doctor doesn't mean she knows more. It might. Fuck it. Just... Believe what he says. So bloody keen to see you on Saturday in Australia. Do you know what will you guys be training on that day? I don't know. I just know Mike and I are bringing our boxing gear and we got to find a boxing gym. What are your thoughts on plant-based nutrition? I believe plants are good, but I also believe meat is necessary. <clears throat> Look at Steve going in and deleting everything. LeBron has done less with more than my, that Miami team way underachieved. Jordan pretty much won three titles with the squad LeBron has now. Pippin and Love are awash. Trips and Thompson was better than Horace. I'm going to keep reading these because I find it to be profound how we're debating two really elite athletes. <clears throat> Your opinion on one day on, one day off routines. I don't think it's enough. I believe you should be exercising every day. Whether it's cardio, boxing, training, running up hills, move. You don't need a complete off day. Get movement. Go on a hike. I know my man Steve Shaw loves going on his hikes. Um, MJ played three years in college and missed four more due to retirement and injury, plus the NBA set up for more scoring. Otherwise, the stats wouldn't be this close. There you go. <clears throat> MTS Way versus MTS MRP. I drink two shakes a day because I can't stomach five meals. If you're, looking <coughs> if you're looking for a meal replacement, MTS Macrolution, MRP, is perfect. It even has fruits and veggies built in. Carbs before or after training or both? If so, how much? Um, a general recommendation before training, right before, like an hour before training, I like to have a scoop of MTS whey mixed with either cream of rice or oatmeal to eat, meet, meet 30 grams of carbs or a banana. So 30 grams of carbs, about 25 grams of protein. <clears throat> Post-workout, same thing. Or a meal. And combine that post-workout with some swolly. LeBron has only led the league in one stat, one season, points in 07-08. He never led the league in rebounds or assists. Jordan led the league in scoring 10 times and steals three times. What, what's your take on the fish halibut for peak wheat? I've heard it's one of the better dishes since it's a flat fish. That's some stupid NPC tart shit. Anything to hit your macros. <clears throat> You like chicken, eat chicken. <coughs> Aaron Endicott, extraordinaire from Tiger Fitness. What's up, Aaron? Hikes are number one. It's so refreshing to get out. And my family and I are planning a summer vacation somewhere in the mountains. For four days, we're just going to enjoy nature. How is MTS Swoley? Fucking amazing. <coughs> hey, Tiger Fitness, do you believe that certain hack squats or variations of barbell squats can create an outer sweep? Or do you believe that certain areas cannot be targeted? <clears throat> a squat's a squat. Whether you angle your toes in, out, straight, squat. Your muscles aren't that fucking stupid. When you squat, your quads fucking fire. Don't listen to NPC, guys. Level all stupid NPC tard shit, I spat out my drink. Perfect. We are caught up. I've answered every single question. And, and... I really appreciate you guys coming in. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Feel free to like, subscribe, and of course, click on that bell so you know when my fucking uh, videos come up. And in the link down below, in the link down below, you will find MTS Swoley. Oh, also, I wanted, this is really funny, Life on Mars, second biggest fake natty on YouTube. Okay, Life on Mars, here's exactly what I do. I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm doing now, too. You guys ready? <clears throat> I'm going to finish with this. I've been getting TRT through my doctor for the past 
2007, uh, past 11 years, 2000, 2007, uh, when I was 27 years old, I started on TRT. I've been very open and honest about this. I keep my testosterone levels artificially because my own production is shut down, not from taking steroids, but from overwork, overstress, and genetic issues. I've been on basically keeping my testosterone between 600 and 800 year round consistently. I recently have hooked up with an endocrinologist and I'm getting everything tested from my HGH levels to my vitamin D levels to all these different things because I've really become, as a board member for the A4M Anti-Aging Society, I've become fascinated with the art of not getting old. And as I box and get into new ventures, I really realized that I like doing shit. I like rocking and rolling. I like living life. I like being active. So I want to do everything within my power to live as long of a life as possible, to be with my family, watch my kids get married. Basically, I now went from saying I want to live 70 great years to I want to live 100 great years. So that's my new focus. I just went and got my complete blood panel done. I took my test on Friday. I should have results back today. Um, assuming there's nothing weird on it, I'll share them. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything I can to anti-age. So I'm not by any means a fake natty. There's nothing natural about me. I'm not on a ton of androgenic steroids. I'm on simply testosterone. That's not enough. I want to look into different things. Is it time for HGH therapy? Is it time for um, <clears throat> different things they have? Different anti-aging things they have. So that's the thing. So I'm not on every steroid there is, or else I'd be honest about it. I'm on testosterone, period. I've been on testosterone since 2007. Um, if I took more, I'd be honest with you guys. I'd tell you, why not? But I'm not a fake natty. But I'm not a natty. But I'm also not, <clears throat> I'm also not a steroid abuser. So take, take that for what it's worth, but please don't question my integrity or my honesty because that's just fucked up because I've given you no reason to do that. And I'm honest about it. In fact, I might even on the low blinder channel, once we get everything, <clears throat> my dosage of testosterone coating ranges between 100 and 150, depending on my levels per week. So not natty, definitely ran more than test. In my past, I've been honest about that. When I No, life on Mars, I'm dead serious. Look at me. Right now, I am on nothing but what I say I'm on. Uh, the last time I really did anything was 2013, before I won my pro card. That was it. Um, it is what it is. But my testosterone is not at 6,000. No. It's between 600 and 800. And, uh, you know, if that's not good enough, then don't believe me. If that, I got good genetics and also I've been training for 23 years life on Mars. I'll be glad to take this conversation up with you on DM. You can DM me on Instagram. I'll gladly talk about it. Um, but I've been training for 24 years and I've been lifting. I was not lifting, but I've been dieting correctly since I was 19 years old. I've been on a controlled caloric intake diet. I only started competing at the age of 26. So I've put in work. I went from being a power lifter to a model to a bodybuilder to now a fake boxer. So don't, oh, I blocked you on Instagram because I asked, okay, life on Mars. <clears throat> huh. You know what? I don't know how to get you back on Instagram. Uh, email me. Okay, life on Mars. Okay, email me. Mark, M -A -R, write this down. M-A-R-C at mtsnutrition.com. And I'll go ahead and correspond via email. And then uh, competing at 26, TRT at 27. No, actually, I was diagnosed with low testosterone before I started competing. It's a weird story. Um, <clears throat> but my testosterone was in the 70s. Um, my testosterone took a shit after college is what happened. Is what happened. I love talking about this, but unfortunately, people who don't like me won't listen anyway. So... Um, it is what it is. Do you self-regulate your testosterone dose to go through a clinic? I go through a GP now, but I will be going through a clinic and I will let you guys know what clinic it is on the other channel. I like to keep this channel as drug free as possible, even if it's prescription. Um, you know, it is what it is. 
30 year old men look different. X traps X, I completely understand they do. If you came to a soccer game, the dads next to me are fat, out of shape, and they look about 50 years old. Okay, I don't look great for my age, but I look good. I definitely look my age. I'm 37 years old. I look 37. I'm good with that. But I have shredded abs. I have veins in my chest and I exercise my ass off. The punishment I've been putting my body through with boxing and training is crazy. The thing is X traps X, I wanna know how old you are. I'm 37 years old, I've been training since I was 13. I've never taken more than three days off of lifting. Never, ever in my entire fucking life. I haven't taken more than three years, 18. Do me a favor, Jerry, or whatever your name is. If you're 18 years old, train for 20 years. Train till you're 38 years old. Write this down. Put it on your calendar. Message me. If you train and diet as hard as I have, I guarantee you, you will look better than me. All natural. You will look better than me. Problem is, all you motherfuckers who say, who say that shit's not attainable, never fucking gave it that kind of time and effort. So don't knock it till you try it. And unfortunately, you don't have the fortitude nor the commitment to stick to a program. I did. And while I don't look great, I look peace out, dude. <clears throat>